Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. Stuck on the humidifier. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome for the first time on the podcast, comedian Jesse May Peluso. <laughs> I was don't know that, when I could clap. Was that odd? <laughs> Everything is odd. Not just you. Li- life is odd. Life is odd. Existence is odder than this what do apartment. You, I'm, I, I'm impressed with how much you did with such a little space. I love where you're starting. I like the starting point. Break down my apartment. What do you? What did you notice? You told I, me to make fun of it. Yeah, I, I wanted you to make fun of it. The last person that made fun of it was Eric Griffin, and, I, and people love it when he does that. So go ahead. Well, I can just, take it. it. Don't hold back. It feels like clean chaos. It, you obviously are neat. You're a neat person, but there's there's shit everywhere, but in a neat way. Give me an example. Like this, this stack is is a neatly stacked. It's a chaos, chaotic stack of a mess. So since the camera's not pointed, uh, describe what you're you're looking at. Right I now. wish I could. Um, uh, there's, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You describe what I'm looking at. Um, it's your shit. There's there, it, a lot of notebooks. It looks like a man just got divorced <laughs> and shoved it all in the fireplace. And the saddest part is you can't even set it on fire. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Ten other things. You know, you know, I don't even to me it feels like a a, a child's bedroom. Keep going. No, but I, Number two. I don't think it's bad. Like Jab I think to the f- chin. Keep I think going. it's sweet. I okay. feel it feels very like if you're obviously a boy. Like if I walked here and a girl walked in, I'd be like, girl, you in danger. Okay. You in da- I I would turn into Whoopi Goldberg from Ghost. I'd be like, you in danger. Damn good movie. Great movie. Damn good Great movie. Great movie. Um, what do you think about my bedding? I'm I'm gonna guess there's not a lot of penetration that happens there. <laughs> Dude, you're killing me. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. What, what's a dead giveaway? What is the dead giveaway? Explain what's on top of the sheets. I can't. Oh, it's a fucking weighted blanket. No. It's, it's not. It's a two person sleeping bag. <laughs> That you've unfolded, so one person can sleep. So one it. person, yeah. It's so sad. I like the material. I like the material. Wow. Keep going. One Keep time, going. I threw up inside of my strawberry shortcake <sighs> sleeping bag, and I okay. tried to wash it, and my sister threw me under the bus. That bitch. Really? She told my mom I vomited in it, and I called her a hater. Oh my goodness. Such a hater. So, is this a man cave? It's a it's a boy who's dreaming of being a man cave. <laughs> I, 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 I the think the truth is. Me. Are you an artist? Do you draw? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, from time to time, I do draw. I yeah. think you're just a real creative person who whose brain is it's, ob- just, it's, it's apparent. There's too much going on. No, I don't think there's too much going on at all. No, I you think brought it's your cool. Can I give her a shout out? Yeah, off, Debbie off D so, Roses. So, uh, Debbie D Roses, uh, do you agree with all the things she said about the apartment thus far? Yes. Yes. Okay. Debbie um, agrees, and can she I tell ask you. Debbie? Three noticeable things. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring the mic to you real quick, and then what are, what did you notice? <laughs> oh, she'll tell you. <laughs> uh, the piano. Oh, that's right. There's a fucking piano, Deb. Um, there's a lot of stickers. It looks like you were at the roller skating rink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and the troll doll, which I would not want to wake up and see in the morning. <laughs> that's enough for me. <laughs> That's enough from you. That's See, enough. she noticed shit. Hold I up. didn't even notice. That d- that troll has a name. His name is Cole. Cole the troll. Yeah. Wow. For your information. Okay. Yeah. Now, is it weird that I have weird stuff on the piano? Because there's uh, some knickknacks on there. Well, there's I don't know candle. if I'd call your dead dad a knickknack. <laughs> we might want to get into that in another episode. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, are is your folks still alive? Hell no. Oh, they're so all they, dead. Oh. Everyone's dead. So are, are you, you an orphan too? No, what do you mean by or- like are both your parents gone? No, my mom's oh, a survivor. Oh, humble yeah. brag. Let's let's get oh down God. to your trajectory because you've made it real far. I saw you on the on the marquee at the freaking laugh factory. Your mm. your thing was on the side of the building. Your oh, name. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I like when I see that too. So that's exciting. What led? To, I mean, let's go backtrack. Ask whatever you want. What ask. led to? Because that's the you're at, up there now, like up here now. Where did it? St- where did you start off? Rape. <laughs> 
uh, timestamp that. <laughs> no, <laughs> timestamp that. That we don't. We can't. There's YouTube. Um, <laughs> see, see, that's YouTube. the equivalent of me going clip it. <laughs> yeah, no, I say in my no. other podcast, I go clip it. <laughs> And you said timestamp, okay. which is just a technical term yeah. for clip it. Okay, so where are you originally from? <laughs> I'm from upstate New York, Syracuse. Really? Yeah, do you know where that is? No. I don't know much. <laughs> about, I don't know much about the East really? Coast. I like it. It's cold. Yes. And I love it, but it's a different way of life there. People are different there, right? They are very different. The weather really determines and dictates the attitude, I think. So give me an example of that. Well, there's a lot of snow. There's a lot of winter. So people are a little bit more, you know, like that New York rigidness, yeah. that New York attitude. They speak their mind there? They speak their mind. Peanuts, and that's what I peanuts, love it. Peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing I noticed. Peanuts. Peanuts here. Peanuts. That's a baseball game. Yeah, okay. I don't know. That's a baseball game. They do their Are thing. you a Make-A-Wish child? <laughs> Do you, do you just go to baseball what? games and write that, that write that down to make a wish <laughs> comment? <laughs> right, wait, write that down. What's where's it? What's she gonna do with the? Don't worry, that's my assistant. Where's uh, it gonna go? Time stamping stuff. I feel like you're time stamping it. things. No. You're gonna try and cancel me. So what? No, there's no. Don't touch me. me. Don't sorry, don't touch sorry, me sorry. ever. Um, what is a make a wish child? <laughs> a make a wish kid is one that's not gonna make it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. I don't want you to. Why? I don't want you to, but I will put you right on the oh on the piano next to your dad. Oh my god! Is that too soon? That is. Is it all of him? Uh, oh, my brother has a portion of his ashes mm. as well. That's nice. Yeah. Now, how did you meet my brother? Uh, well, we both knew of each other because of stand up. Every time I saw him at the comedy store, I just gravitated towards him because he's a, you know, he's a magical creature your brother is he mythical to you he's mythical to me his body type too as well. just his how he moves his body how mm -hmm. he contorts his body mm -hmm. what he does with his wee wee mm -hmm. it's all mythical so he does that he's showing it to other kids. yeah he's flipping it and flopping it and yeah. showing it its dexterity and i'm like wow yeah and has he been nice to you no he's a terrible person <laughs> all right so what where is it no, your brother's a sweetheart yeah i um we really got to talk when we both were at the Just for Last Festival. In Montreal. Yep, 2019. And boy, did he, was he waiting for that uh, email. <laughs> because uh, there's many, many, there's many, many years where he was not invited. So finally. Wait, wait, I thought you meant my podcast, but you meant Montreal. <laughs> yeah, Montreal. Montreal. That's why I was Oh, hey. since you brought it up, you let's plug your podcast. Okay, <laughs> the name of your podcast I'm not trying to is. Turn your fans on. I'm sweaty. No, I wanted. I want to plug your podcast. Oh, the um, name of your podcast is something you should know because you probably should have googled me before I came into your four by four fucking house. <laughs> the least Ouch. you could do was use the one of four computers oh. you have. No, my, it's Sharp Tongue. No, but is that the name of the podcast? Yeah, that's one of them. I have Sharp three. Tongue. Yeah. You have three podcasts? Do. How do you manage to do that? I mean, that's I, a lot I of work. Oh, that's why Deb is in my life. Debbie, do you edit and stuff? She just started. She's just teaching herself how to do a whole Are you bunch on Adobe stuff. Premiere? Like, what's the situation like? Yeah. yeah. And you're learning? She's great. Okay, and she's so, so she's doing one or two of your podcasts. Yeah, she does some. She helps with the clips. Uh huh. I totally trust her to pick the funny parts or like poignant parts and mm -hmm. every clip that she picks. I'm right. Like, and dope. then, do you have a co-host on w uh, one or two of them? Yeah, and Sharp Tongue, I'll have guests. I'll have like doctors. Did you just do coke before we started? No, no, I have okay. I have boogers. Yeah, oh, sorry, okay. sorry, um, it's dry. I have like people <sighs> who interest me. <laughs> okay. Um. Now, did you start in New York? Start podcast. Yeah. In New York? Wh where did that start? I didn't actually. I started out here. I started the podcast out here. Sharp Tongue. Um, was shortly after I moved to L.A. because mm -hmm. that's what everyone was doing. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. agents were like, just start a podcast. Well, th th that's the thing now because they knew how relevant yeah, they, it was. everyone was doing it. And I, I think because Rogan was you know, successful at it that everybody was just, all their agents were telling their clients to do podcasts. Yeah, that's so crazy. Yeah, and I was like, well, I don't really know what I want to talk about. I don't know what I want to call it. And I called it Sharp Tongue because when I used to do stand-up. Because you do have a sharp tongue. I do have a sharp tongue. And you were wearing, you know what, I'm putting it all together because the f I s you were wearing a Wu-Tang shirt the first time I met you. And they have sharp tongues as well. And you definitely have a sharp tongue. I do. You're like quick with it. Yeah. Go ahead. And I used to do stand-up. Yes. And I would make my own flyers. What do you mean? But like, 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 like Kinko's? Yeah, exactly. Like oh, I, would, I would design them. Good for Thank you. you. Yeah. I love the hustle. On that hustle. I love the hustle. I would design it. And I would say Sharp Tongue presents Jesse Mae Peluso. Meanwhile... Oh, it was a production company. Yeah, but it was just me. But, but you came up with it. Yeah, but I was like, oh, I want people to think I'm... Like, there's someone backing this. Yeah. I was 18. There's no one backing it. You started it. back then? Yeah. 
I've been you doing stand up for twenty years. What the hell? I know I should be way do more you know famous. About this? <laughs> what do you remember your first mic? Like what got yeah, you to I do, do it? I what? had my first stand up on video all five minutes that I did. Where, where? New York? It was at the Cantab Lounge in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Really? Mm-hmm. What made you even pursue that? What made you want to get up on stage and tell jokes? Um, a, uh, an amalgamation of things. I think my dad and I always watched stand-up specials together. Mm-hmm. He was friends with local stand-up comedians in Syracuse, so I was, uh, you know, around them mm-hmm, personally. Mm-hmm. And from watching the specials, seeing what guys that my dad knew, seeing how they were making a career, what the fuck is that? What is that little juice? <laughs> What the fuck is that? It's what a, is this? It's a probiotic drink. It's not. Oh my, my god! Ar- this is gonna make you cry out of your asshole. <laughs> you drink this? Oh, well, my intern brought it as a gift. But oh, I do. It's probably nice. But I have. Yeah, it's she probably brought, nice. Yes, I take yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah. It's so probably you, actually uh, something really once you, nice. Once you, once you, once you get, crack I probably that won't crack, drink it's it. It's a probiotic. But I'm sure it's, good. it's a probiotic. Yep. Crack it open. I'm definitely Let's not do a gonna. Cheers but you can. To your career. This unit. And cheers the to your beautiful assistant. To my beautiful assistant. Us. Cheers. That we're so fucked up. We need two people who aren't fucked up to help us okay, organize our fucked yeah. upness do you like orange sherbet i sure do it but drink, it's like a creamsicle like yeah an but the, you creamsicle. know I, everyone heard about cosby and i just don't trust everybody in this room <laughs> okay what time stamp that as well <laughs> thank you um so 18 years old you're like i'm gonna go for it yeah. you were watching um c- comedy stand on up. yes and then you just said did you have did you write down a, a like an app? I wrote down word for word my first stand up and really? remembered all of it. Really? Five minutes word for word. It was so bad. Oh my god. It was so fucking bad. But you you're only eighteen and you did yeah, it. Yeah, but it you know, but it's ex- what you would expect an eighteen year old to be talking about. Yeah, but most eighteen year olds don't would didn't wouldn't have the courage to do that. They'd be That's too scared. Point. That's a good so point. So what was the response like? It actually was really good. Mm-hmm. You know, I got that like you get the 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 bug, as they say. Mm-hmm. You know, you get that feeling of love from the audience. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm funny, and I just thought it was gonna be that way forever. <laughs> so there were. I just thought it was always gonna so be. So there's. Oh fuck yeah! There's ups and downs. There's so many. Ups Still and to downs. this day. Yeah, absolutely. I thought when you're at your level, every show's a home run. No, it's challenging in a different way because the stakes are higher. Your standards are higher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What you're talking about is heavier. So it's you. You get better at being a comedian, but it's still challenging. It's never really mastered. No. You know, and I think if something be is mastered, then I don't know if we can consider that an art necessarily. I think right. the pursuit of constantly perfecting it is a part of the art of it all. Because art's always changing. Exactly. It could and be you're one artist. painting. Yeah, it could be one painting, and then you'd be like, oh. I like it, but I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna do, you know what I mean? Yeah. It could constantly be evolving, right? Yes. Is that re- yes. same thing with your comedy? Yes. You're absolutely. like, so give me an example that you have like a bit of uh, subject matter, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna add this tag. Do you? Is it like adding tags to yeah, your? Yeah, adding tags. It's perfecting it. It's taking out shit that's unnecessary. Because mm-hmm. sometimes, even though people laugh at it, if it's not adding to the story, or if it's not something for me, anyways, it's somewhat poignant mm-hmm. and i just fucking get rid of it right are you an alcoholic yeah i'm recovering i just saw the aa book over okay, your shoulder we'll just timestamp that too because it's <laughs> like uh, we're not supposed to talk about that on his uh, youtube oh, we're not no i'm just kidding it's fine <laughs> God, I was like, 14 Whoa. years 14 years 14 years congratulations is that what Thank people you. say you're welcome thank you uh, uh, yeah, i don't uh, know what to say well you know i uh can i since you brought it up yeah if i was not sober no i wouldn't be able to even do this or any of the other stuff I'm doing, like with Scissor Bros, because I, yeah, I wouldn't show up for it. I think you. I wouldn't show up for it. You uh, seem you know, like this you're really doing well, though. Like you seem. Um. Yes and no. I mean, I. You're like I'm struggling. No, I'm. I am, but I'm not. I mean, look, I used to work at a sandwich shop down the street, <laughs> Fat Sales. So. How I, long ago? This was uh like uh. Twenty thirteen. Okay. Maybe, something like that. Yeah. And then. Uh, I've worked in uh, every kind of bad job. Uh, I worked at P.F. Chang's, Coffee Bean, Jamba Juice. Oh, you've done the service industry. Uh, yeah, IHOP, Graveyard wow. Shift. Oh, my Tempe. gosh. Uh, I did. Uh, I mean, you name it, I've been there. I've washed dishes. I've done the mozzarella stick uh, fryer. Did you ever jerk off into someone's lunch? No, I've never done that. Although I almost lost my fingernail because uh, I was the shake guy. I was the milkshake guy at Fat Sal's. We, were, we had a rush, and... Um, and I, you know, I, I put no, my, I don't. well, I put my finger on a bin because, you know, I was like trying to, 
get the ice cream and then I was lifting up this ice cream bin but it was frozen and my fingernail got stuck on the metal um you know the coping part. Okay, yep. Yeah, and then I'm like, you know Zane H- H- Hedberg? Zane Zane was my boss. He's a comedian. So shout yeah. out to Zane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Zane. He hired me and so I was like, "Zane!" Ah! You know, I was like, I was so scared. Oh, you were hurt. Well, I could have lost my fingernail. Oh, someone could have had that in their in their Oh, that could have there could have been a liability thing. Yeah, that right? could have been a oh, very expensive so fingernail. Just... Can okay. we timestamp that? <laughs> <laughs> now this is a perfect time a word from our sponsor. <laughs> The Stevie Weeby Show is sponsored by Manscaped. I use this for my nose hairs. I use this for my nut hairs. Get 20% off and free shipping with code Stevie at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off plus free shipping at manscaped.com with code stevie s-t-e-e-b-e-e it's time to throw out your old hygiene and upgrade your life yum and we're back <laughs> So going back to service jobs, did you ever work anything like that? I was a bartender for eight years, seven, eight years. I consider that service. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, this is while you're doing comedy as well. Yes, in New York. So how long were you out in New York for? I was in New York for about 10 years. That's where I started. Well, actually, no, I take it back. I started in Massachusetts. I really cut my teeth in New York. Now... Do you grow thicker skin? I heard East Coast is just like, like boom. You could hit is. up like five mics a night or something. Yeah, I mean, you can hit up 10 if you start early enough. So that's what you're doing? I was doing a lot, definitely. How do you find these mics? Is it just uh, word There's of mouth? There's McDougal Street. Like back in the day, McDougal Street, I mm-hmm. mean, even like in the 60s was like a hopping place for a lot of musicians. Bob Dylan used to hang out mm-hmm. down there and... Um, it became sort of like the comedy mecca in, in New York. But, mm-hmm. you know, comedians would run their own rooms. Like we'd find a bar that had a cool venue and just make a deal with the owner. I did that a few times. Bring your, bring bring your shows. shows. Yep. And that's you make your own flyers. Yeah, you make your own flyers. You go out in the street. You you literally pull people in and mm-hmm. you pull people in until you have five's a show. As far as I'm considered, we got five hoes. We're ready to go. That's a show? Five's a why, show. Why five? Because... If two leave, like a couple, there's still three left. And it's a little bit harder to leave Ooh. when there's only three people, so they stay out of out of guilt. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's so a guilt So five game. is all you need five for a show. Five is all you need. But, you know, you would start with that, and it, it would start to grow. And I got to the point where I had a kid working for me because he wanted stage time. And so I'd be like, okay, cool. I'm so going to give you, had you your stage minions? time. Yeah, you had your foot soldiers? I, I, yes. So you would say, hey, Chucky. Pass out these flyers at Union Square, whatever. Chris, his name was Chris. Hey, Chris. Chris Copo. Pa- pass out these flyers. You got to earn your stripes. Yeah. And he, well, he, you know, he actually would, they would come up to you like, hey, I'll help if I can get stage time. That's, that's all they want. That's all they wanted. That's golden. Yes. Stage time is everything. Stage time it, is, is a commodity in New York City. Is it harder Even to get? Even out here. Is it hard to get stage time out here? Well, it's harder out here because of the logistics of the, the living situation. You have to drive everywhere. You have to consider the drive time. In New York, you could hit up like Do you five ride, spots ride the train. all around. And then just, you just in the LA? Tra- no, in New York, you have the train. Oh, yeah. You hop on the train. You can be all over across town. It was so easy to traverse it. Here, it's difficult. Like it's driving. Hard. Yeah. I parked. I stepped in like Deb se- stepped in ketchup. I th- I tripped over a woman. We're just coming here. Yeah, there was a raccoon. There was human poop. Like, <sighs> okay, let's not disclose what street it is, <laughs> but it's somewhere around here. Okay, <laughs> the, and everything you said was true. <laughs> there is a, there is a raccoon family. There's a, there's a very there <laughs> adorable two raccoon, raccoon family. families. I just two doors down. I'd, I'd open the door. I would say, wave to them. No, see, real talk. They would used to. Yeah, they used to be right there. Uh, on the other side of that wall in a shed. They're so cute. Yeah, so You're the cutest ketchup. neighbors. So shout out to the raccoon family. Shout out family. to the raccoon family. Shout out to the maybe human <sighs> fecal matter that we had yeah. to, you know. Yeah, do. Poo, poo's around here. There's poo poo. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of poo poo. Uh, <laughs> she's from the East Coast as well, Deb. Yeah, Deb's from the East Coast. Because she, she agreed with the, the, public tra- yeah, the public transit. She's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's how it is. When did you decide to take it from New York to Los Angeles? I was... Working with MTV. You did? Yeah, I did a show on a MTV. Show? Yep. What show was it? What I, lo- I love you know nothing about me. It's really, it's adorable. 
You're like, you've done a lot. What? I don't know anything you've done. <laughs> I should write down, what's the name of the show, the MTV show? <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 just, it, just say it real quick. <laughs> Just, 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 just yeah, shut yeah. your mouth and say it real quick. Yeah, what's the name? It's, it? it's called Girl Code. <laughs> so look out, look that up, look up Girl Code. Okay, it's probably, just, <laughs> it's probably on YouTube. Right? It's just, it's it was just YouTube. a stupid show. I yeah, mean, it was not. It was dude, fun. that's work. It was awesome. You auditioned for it. I did. How many auditions uh, did you have to go to? Ten years of failing. That's how I auditioned. <laughs> for real. Yeah, ten years of failing, and that's all it took. Did you have representation agent like an no. agent? You did it all on your own. Mm-hmm. How did you manage to navigate through that? Well. Once I got MTV, then I then started. People, yeah. Right. Then, yep. Okay. So mm-hmm. you got the and then the auditions were in New York. The auditions were in New York. We filmed in New York for you two years. You booked it. How yep. many seasons? We did two seasons, and then we were about to do a third. I wanted to renegotiate. I thought I was more worth more than they were willing to pay, and mm-hmm. so I went with E Network because they wanted to do an overall deal with me. E Entertainment. Yeah, E Entertainment. Remember E Entertainment? Yes. Remember Joan Rivers live on the red carpet? I bought her. I ha- I ha- own her documentary. I, it's so good. Have you? It's, it's a great. It's so it's good. It's really informative. A piece of work. She, the one thing I admire about her is she's organized too. Yeah, she is very organized. Did you organized. see the, like the way she organized her all jokes? Of her, yeah, like, like the Rolodex the, yes. of jokes. And Do you admire organi- her? Like, like alphabetized. Yeah. So would you want a career like Joan? Yeah. Rest in peace. Rest Absolutely, in peace. Absolutely, because if she was still alive, she'd still be working. Right. She made such a, uh, a profound statement once. Uh, she was saying, I think it might have been on this, the documentary, I think some girl said that she like you know opened the door for young, young female comics, and Joan was like, "I'm still walking through the door, right? Like, I'm still here." And she still was doing it till the end of her life. I she know she was doing casinos and quick. Yeah, she was so quick on stage. She was so sharp, mm-hmm. and she did everything. She worked so fucking hard. She's the OG of like. Would you say out of the female she, the female comedians, she's the OG? I would say so. Like who else is there? Span decades. She didn't she have her own? She had her own talk show. She had her own talk show. She was Johnny Carson's right hand girl. Yeah, but then she, they, they had a falling out. They had a falling out. Yeah, didn't because they? she became successful. And she Johnny was a threat to him. Yes. He didn't like the fact because they she had offered her, own her show. a show, mm-hmm, her own show right. with Fox. I, I I love watching that just from just from an outsider's point of view. I'm like, whoa, she did a lot. Yeah, and in a time where women weren't necessarily thought of as people to have opinions and to speak in the way she did and to have the voice she had, lone and to wolf, si- lone, lone wolf. Because really now was. it's very common for females. It's a to dime do a dozen. Aren't there more co- female <laughs> comics now? Like when There's a you ton. Say? A ton. I think it's awesome. But back then in the 60s and 70s, there was what maybe you could count them on one hand. It was like Lily maybe. Tomlin, her, Phyllis Diller. Keep going. Uh, Moms Mabley's from way back in the day. So you know your history. Well, I, I just, you know, I, there was only a few. There's only a few. Yeah. You um, probably know a lot more. Who th- came after that? Who was like after Joan and them? Who was the Kathy next? Kathy Griffin. And Kathy she was, was the one that said that about Joan. Kathy Griffin. Yes. She's. I remember that part in the yes. documentary. She's like, you know, she gives her a lot of respect, right? So Kathy Griffin. And then what about Margaret Cho? Margaret Cho, hell yeah. You can't, you can't forget about Margaret Cho. Asian, you a lesbian. You can't forget about Margaret. You can't forget about Margaret. No, yeah. she was definitely a she's groundbreaking been here. comedian. In this, she was sitting where, yeah, she's been in here. Well, that's funny because I think that was the last time anyone saw her alive. What are you talking about? <laughs> She's been oh, mi- you son of a gun. She's been missing. Time stamp that, too. She's been missing. Oh, my God. Is that the smell coming from the fridge? It might be in the cellar. Margaret, hon. <laughs> Cho. You know what? I showed Cho, her- are you here? No, it was a Korean thing. I showed her nothing but respect, okay? <laughs> I showed her nothing but. That's a Korean thing. You, you all know New York. Right? The Italians. Mm-hmm. I've seen Goodfellas. I know about that shit. That's <laughs> a good movie. Respect. Respect. Well, you like Goodfellas? It's one of my favorite Italian movies. Okay, well, let's let's since you brought that do you, up. Do you like what cinema? are your top top three then? So is that one of top them? Top three Italian movies or movies in general? Movies in general. Well, how about this? Ooh, top, top five one. movies in general. Oh god. Okay, you give me your first so I know where no we're going. No country for old men. Oh, that's a great choice. I am already Cohen Brothers. What yeah. a solid fucking choice. Also like Fargo though. That's a Are you throwing one. that in the top five though? No, but I like Fargo. Okay, because I feel I like Fargo, Fargo and No Country for Old Men kind of fall under the same category. Yeah. So you can kind of keep them at one together. Yeah. I'm my first. You the, the, it's your turn. Then I'll do my second. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, my first. I'm gonna go Jurassic Park. <laughs> what? The- are you sure, bro? You, it's are still you sure you up. don't want to timestamp that out of the episode? Yeah. Can we time, time Jurassic stamp that? Jurassic Park. 
Uh, Why? Was there now? You got to think about. I'm not just going for the best movie. I'm going for the impact. Entertainment and entertainment. So this why movie came on the scene and it was groundbreaking. You know what? You're right. It was groundbreaking. Right. We hadn't seen that sort of CGI. Right, and there was only 15 minutes. Of, of special that. effects of like the raptors four or five of which were raptors actual CGI, and the T-Rex yes. and everything. What he did with the minimal CGI he used, everyone always talks about how much CGI mm-hmm, is in that film. Mm-hmm. It was only a little bit, a little bit, and there's so much fucking suspense. Was who directed that? Do you know? Steven that, Spielberg. That's okay. So now that makes more sense. Yeah. Steven fucking Spielberg. Yeah, it's like a the legend. Jaws of our generation. A legend. A legend. The number, man knows how to build suspense. And number tell a story. two for me is um, Taxi Driver. I've never seen that. All right, you can. Wow. The front door's right there. I can't tell where. I don't even think there's and a front door And you call anymore. yourself a fucking New Yorker? Oh! And you don't. Have you oh. never seen Taxi Driver? Oh, God, there's a movie Deb. you haven't seen? Deb. Deb hasn't seen it either. You know what else we haven't seen? You haven't seen it. We gotta wait to get through this whole five and see if it's on the list. Oh, dude, I have to really, like. What? Oh. You know why? Because I lived it. Oh, what? Creepy guy wants to murder me in a cab? I was in New York for 10 years. Okay, number I two lived for you. It. That's fair enough. Number two for you. Fair um, enough. Number two, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which it was going to be called, but it's Willy Wonka. I mean, Actually, no, it was going to be called Willy Wonka. Which one? The, the one with Gene Wilder? Yes. In the and there's a Gene right there. I, I read that. That's okay. from here. Yeah. That's Gene, yeah. Um, damn good movie. I have a quote tattooed on my arm. Damn good movie. Classic. Dark. What do you like about the Oompa Loompas? The darkness. The Oompa Loompas? I liked what Gene did with it. How Gene went dark with it. Because the story is dark. If you actually read Ronald Dahl's original book, it's right. a little bit darker. Right. It's a, it, You know, the children are... are, are <laughs> Kind of tortured. Yeah, I mean, and they're, they, they, they disappear. And they're in poverty. They were. They're, they're poor. poor. They're poor. They're just wanting to get the golden ticket. Wait, did you? Can I ask you a personal question? Am I poor? Yeah. Were you? <laughs> Still? <laughs> Look where I live, for God's sake! Of course, I'm poor. I have a fucking sleeping bag as a comforter. Yes, I'm poor. I've lived here 18 years. Doesn't Jeremiah give you any money? <laughs> All right. Let's leave that. <laughs> Timestamp that. You've got a lot of things to write Time down. Timestamp that. Yeah, yeah. I don't need sympathy Okay, wait, wait, wait. Me, no, no, wait. I was, well, let me tell you something. I just found out I grew up poor. <laughs> Man, this is a horrible episode. For me. Just, oh my God. Did you hear what I said? Say it again. I'm trying to bond with you. Say it just don't touch me because I don't know if you've I'm washed. not. I'm not. I'm clean, man. I shower, dial soap, the whole thing. Go ahead. Dial soap. Go I ahead. I grew up poor, too. Okay, number two is Willie, is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You got to go through. I love that movie. I you know do too. when he greets the the kids. You know when he, you know they're behind the mm-hmm. gate. That he does a he had made some interesting choices. He did. You know he and pretended like he was kind of like yes. uh, like disabled or something. Yes. But then he like rolled and went like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I like that. That yes. was a choice he made. Yes, it was a choice um, he made. There ain't no Gene Wilders like that anymore. There's no huh? Gene There's Wilders. No one like that, huh? I mean, I could put all his movies in the top yeah. five, especially him and, and Richard Pryor. They were so magical. So, together. number three is Stir Crazy. Thanks for I'm bringing gonna that. I'm going to go. Up. Yep. I'm Stir going. I'm crazy, I'm baby. I'm matching you. I'm matching you. Great Stir fucking movie. Stir Crazy. I'm go, go watch Stir it crazy. today. Very comedic. I mean, there's nothing it's like so those physical. two. It's so physical. There's nothing like them. Oh, my God. Is that God. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a woman? Is that stir crazy? No, that's hear no evil. See yeah, no evil. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. you know, so you've saw the all Jeans movies. Yes. Blazing Saddles, yes. all that stuff. Cisco, so I get, I guess. Cisco kid. Yeah. We, Bonnie and Clyde was his first role. Okay, so I I didn't I haven't seen that one. Yeah, that's with okay. um I believe is it Bridget Bardot or Jane Fonda who she plays? Knows her, she knows her shit, huh? It's 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 she knows her Warren shit? Beatty. And I can't forget who the, I, I forget who the female is. Smart dude. I could be wrong. Yeah, she's smart. Faye Dunaway, maybe. Okay, yeah. Faye Dunaway. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yep. Uh, okay, so Your I'm on. Uh, is it number four for me? Yep. Pulp Fiction. I had to throw wow. a Pulp Fiction. I had to throw a Tarantino one. I, I was gonna throw Inglorious Pastors mm. in there, but Pulp Fiction, iconic movie. Yes. Right, Deb. Pulp classic. Right. Yeah. Pretty solid. Not everyone gives Eric Stoltz props because Eric Stoltz is what the he? he's the heroin he's the heroin dealer. Oh, uh, he was so good with the girl. Tell him who Eric Stoltz is. Eric Stoltz. Well, I don't know who he is outside of Pulp Fiction, but he plays such a great tweaker. That whole scene was like that was the ter- oh Jesus. There's a fucking DVD. What is this? Okay, okay. Can yeah, I hold yeah, it or yeah, yeah, you could hold it, but that means a oh, lot that's, to me. Wow. Damn good, John Hughes. Damn good wow, movie. he's got quite a butt crack chin. He was also in Jerry Maguire. He was in a movie uh, called Mask with Cher. Remember that movie? 
Oh, the guy with the elephantitis? Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. You don't have to say the technical medical Isn't term. Isn't that what it was? Yeah. This he had the happen lion. to people's Just nuts? say li- he had the lion face. Just say the lion, lion face. Lion face is better? Because li- he looked like a lion. But doesn't elephantitis happen to balls, too? <sighs> I've seen it. Deb? I've seen it on. I've seen it on Google. Deb, do you agree with her? Did you agree? <laughs> Deb. 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 <gasps> what? Think about Deb it. No. <laughs> Deb. Think about it. Okay. <laughs> Eric Stoltz. I didn't what know he had such a luscious What a career. great actor. I love you had the DVD ready to go. Eric Stoltz was phenomenal. Still, <laughs> still around. Have you seen this movie? I don't. You know, I'm sure dust. I have. Is it John Hughes? John Hughes. Ha- have you seen it? Because yes. it looks like it was the John first Hughes. time you picked it up. John Hughes. I'm going to get a, a mold poisoning from you uh, dusting it uh, off in right. my face. Okay. <laughs> so since you brought up John Hughes, what's your favorite John Hughes, Hughes movie? And we could end it. Okay, do you want me to? We don't have to end it because uh, I'm uh, at you four. Like, I'm oh. at four. We have to go. Okay, okay, okay. Because then we got to go five. Okay, you go four then. Do you want my Th- fourth to I be want John your, Hughes? Yeah, no, no, no. You don't have to. I don't Jesus. want to pressure you like that. Just, Just whatever comes to mind. You did Pulp Fiction. That was so good. I'm gonna. I have to go with my heart, and this is gonna be probably. Th- this is gonna. This is gonna split the room. Go ahead. Ghostbusters, the original. You know I can't. Come on. I can't, I can't argue with, with that. Zool? I can't argue. Rick with Moranis that. is a comedic. Dan genius. Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. Oh my Are you god! Kidding me? Great movie. Great now movie. was that the one with the guy in the painting? He was in yes. the, what, what was the name, Vlad, what name? was his name, Vlad or something? V- v- um, the Impaler, uh, fa- um, what was his name? V- 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 Vlad? V- v- Vlad? Vigo. 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 Good memory. Vigo. And the, the painting came to, like, he. that was the arch nemesis ghost. Yes. Vigo. Yep, he was in the painting. Right. And Sigourney Weaver was, like, flicking her bean to it. You know what? I'm glad you brought Sigourney Weaver's name up. Well, let's give her some love. She's she's OG, too. She's OG, too. She's alien? Alien. Wow. You know what? That's a great role that in could the be 80s. On a li- that could be a li- on anyone's list. That could be on anyone's Ridley list. Ridley Scott. I mean, j- such an epic film. And also, look what happened to that. It turned into such a long franchise. How many aliens were there? Uh, there's, like, a thousand of them. There was one with... Uh, Winona Ryder was when one, one. That's of them. right. That and was then, uh, uh, the sh- one where uh, she was the, the inmates. Bot. Yeah, and the inmates were in the and then the with with them Ron Perlman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was so a they good had one. like five or to seven of those. I think they did. An right? Alien Resurrection, and then Alien versus Predator. Right. Aliens Two was one of my favorites. Aliens Two because Bill is, Paxton was Bill, that's he was a great sequel. He was funny. He was so funny. They really landed it with Aliens yeah, Two. Yeah, yeah. And with those movies like the sequels once you start getting into sequels it gets a little tricky right but alien is is a good one do you oh. remember the premise for alien three yeah it's it's there a, was a, an a alien. little foggy on that one there was an alien, alien and then an alien came and it ate alien people two was with oh. a- alien three is when they got fucked by the alien that's right that's very clear and then the alien plot. two was when they um yeah they went to that planet like and that whatever the mining operation what about the, prometheus oh is that a part does that prequel. count prequel does that count? Absolutely. So that, then you have to add that to their you whole. You have to add that to the oh, whole, right, the to whole the thing. whole s- ch- franchise of aliens. Yes, yeah. you do. So uh, okay, so, so I so my four was what was my fourth? What I just say? Did I say something? Did she say Ghostbusters? Something? Ghostbusters. You're five. You gotta go five. Oh, Ghostbusters. And don't 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 just don't willy nilly this. Really think about it because this is where we're really gonna figure out who you are. There will be blood. Like tonight. Oh, is this how it ends? Paul Thomas. Margaret! Paul Thomas Anderson. There wow. will be blood, right? That's a Daniel Day Lewis, right? Unreal. Paul Dano. Paul Dano as Eli. Wonderful. Damn good flick. Very good. That's a tough one to beat. That that was just also the way they shot it, the location, how it was just come on, dude. Basically one location. Come on, that was a damn good movie. You all seen that? There, there's. Wait, what'd you say? You Debbie? haven't seen it. You, you like that? You De- should, you should watch that tonight. Deb, Deb, you haven't seen it. There will be blood is a powerful one, and you know, you also your your list is pretty solid. You bookended it with pretty solid right. films. With you think so? Hell yeah! No Country for Old Men, and now you're ra- rounding it up with There Will Be Blood. Thank you. Fuck. Thank you. How am I even gonna come back? There's at no you? pressure. There's no pressure. <sighs> Just whatever comes to mind. I thought a great deal about this. I, I, I yeah, stay up Jesus. thinking about stuff like this. Obviously. Like, what do I like? I could do horror genre. We could do a horror Ooh, genre, sh- too. Horror is my jam. Okay, okay let's do okay, horror okay. next. No, wait, wait. Next. My, I know what my number five is. It's go usually ahead. my number one. What? The Thing, John Carpenter's. I mean, can't go wrong with that. Fucking Kurt Russell. Can't go Not wrong Not a woman in the film, but that's okay. We you all know, know let's how give John Kurt, Carpenter Let's give Kurt Russell women. a little, let's give him a little love, right? Yeah, he right? deserves uh, love. Big Trouble in China? Oh, my God. 
Escape to LA? Escape to New York. Escape to New York? Overboard? Uh, Oh my God. You want to talk about a comedic duo? I like Dennis Quaid too. People yeah, don't even Quaid. bring up Dennis fucking Quaid. Yeah, they need to bring he, him up. He got a lot of work in the 80s. He sure did. Out, like inner, whatever, inner space. Yep. Dreamscape. Oh, Dreamscape. That's a deep cut. That's a good movie. Damn. That's a sleeper. I didn't they know don't you were know. Such a cinephile. They don't know about that. They don't know about Dream. They don't know about no Dreamscape. No, they don't. They don't know about no Dreamscape. That's a deep cut. I love the. I love these types of things. Can we do top three horror? Okay, top three horror. Because my shit's already here. Go ahead. No, I want to I could just yours. go boom, I need, I boom, need to know boom. yours. I need to Number know Number one, and this is with, there's no discussion for me, The Exorcist. Over, okay. I mean, The Exorcist. It is you pretty can't, classic. You can't get any scarier, in my opinion. Have you seen The Exorcist? The sound on that. Oh, my God. I was going to kick your ass out. I mean, she didn't <laughs> see Taxi. Go ahead. Go the ahead. Exorcist, like the sound on that film is jarring. The sound engineering, the sound editing, and just the demonic, it gets into you. the possession, yes. psychological things. It's fucked, and the whole, everything with the church. Yeah, it was such a, um, and especially like the time was it the seventies? Yeah, when it came Georgetown, out, Georgetown. It was like taking place in Georgetown. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Have you been to the staircase? No, mm. I don't think I would you're want not that to. much of a fan. <laughs> it's a great place to kick someone down. Uh, Chelsea. What, 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 just Can you timestamp. Yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Thank you. Okay, what's your second? No, you, okay, s- you okay, have to okay. do number one. Okay, um, we're 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 spanning genres. Yeah, we're just we're just horror is the umbrella. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with. Whew, this is so hard. We're only doing three. I already did the thing in the first five, so I'm not gonna do uh, the thing can't, again. You can't throw this in the horror genre because you already threw that, and you're all yeah, and all, it's all like all sci-fi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, a newer one. And you I can do a newer one because I'm lo- going to do a newer one, too, for num- my number two. Okay. But go ahead. So I'm going to go a little bit well newer-ish. I'm just going off of the age of the director at the time and what he did with the genre, how he sort of put his own spin on it, which is really hard to do with horror. Go ahead. Are you going to throw up in your mouth? No, no, no. I'm, I'm waiting okay. and I'm anticipating this. Um, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Ooh, zombie. With Ty Burnell. Zombie. Now is that his name from oh, um, now is Dawn Modern of the, Family? You're right. Is Dawn of the Dead the one that takes place in the shopping mall? Yes. Dude. And he just did his own. He made the zombies run. I think right. Zack Snyder is directly responsible for But that's for a remake. The Didn't Walking they have Dead. a, oh, they had an OG one. They had an OG the one. Romero, yes, the Romero. The Romero one. George A. Romero. Yeah. And yes. it was in the 80s or 70s yep. shopping mall. Yep. That's interesting. George A. Romero was actually one of the OG, OG zombie, zombie dudes. creators. Right, yes. right. And he worked a lot with Tom Savini, who's been in the industry for a really long time as a, a special effects guy. How does he's know responsible so much about for. Uh, um, I'll tell you my next one. I'll, I'll tell you what he's responsible okay, for. Okay, so you said you, because you kind of sparked s- some thoughts here as far as like, because I don't want to go all 70s, 80s. You go wherever you want to go. I want to go. This okay, no, house. I want to bring modern, because this, because uh, I, because I, because wa- I, I've just watched, I watch this from time to time every couple months. Mm. Hereditary. Mm. I don't know if any woman is given a better <sighs> performance in sheer terror the way Tony Collette did. She's been good the whole time. Yeah, Remember her in Sixth Sense? Oh, fuck. She's been she good. She was just com- You're right. compelling performance. She is a compelling performer. Great really actress. Is. Yes. Great. In the sun. In the guy with the mole? When he hits his head. You know, he actually. Handsome. Dude, what's his name? Handsome, man. I don't remember his. He's got. What is it? Nat Wolf. Yeah, handsome. He broke his jaw in the scene where he was smacking his head on the desk. Really? So he committed he that much to his, his performance? Yeah. In the classroom? Yep. Remember that scene? How fucking terrible. And his oh, face was all distorted. Yeah, he did that. Oh, where he looked at the reflection on the, on the yes, side. Yes, and yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. scene, he dislocated his jaw. And that's jaw. when Paymon was like about to take over his soul. Yes. Oh, Paymon, yeah. You know, uh, who's what's that director's who did Hereditary? Because um, he's got a couple films under his belt. What is it? Midsummer. Can you look that up real quick? Um, um, it's La- uh, Lars. Jeffrey, is, it? Uh, is it some Jeffrey? It's, it's a Swedish director. Um, yeah, no. Wait. I'm going to, you know what? Wait, 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 yeah, because that's going to drive me crazy. I won't be able to sleep tonight unless we find that. Can you find that yeah. out real quick? Yeah, because that's going to drive same. me crazy. See, that's where I go. Uh, pa- what? Patrick Anderson. Are you sure? No, no, that's no, not. no, 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 that's no. not it. Just He's say like hereditary. S- Just type in hereditary. Is it, and, and hereditary is your number two, right? Oh, Area Ari Aster, yeah, yeah. I, uh, Hereditary is your second. Yeah, I'm gonna go Midsummer. It fucked me up. You know what? Midsummer that, you know really what, hurt dude, my that soul. That was a good one too. That really, it, it was something about that. It's just something new. It's not only that. It's like 
the breakup aspect of it. Mm-hmm. She was a, in a vulnerable kind of really downtime in her life. Yeah. And just her, like, it was almost like prophesied that she was supposed to go to that uh, festival. It was very and prophesied. Yeah. Well, she was definitely chosen by the, her boyfriend's friend. That the the Swedish dude, the yes. homie the, with the long hair, the, the one that invited so them. Sweet. Yeah, but he's like, he hey, wasn't, hey, was no. he? It was he. She was fulfilling the prophecy of the village. You know they what? Needed. You know what scene stu- s- kind of stuck out is in the middle in the movie when they that dude took a piss on that sacred tree. Oh god! And I'm like, oh, they really like abide by these rules, and you know what I mean, like as far as their set rules, as far as their religion, and yes, uh, there's one scene that the with the cliff, the when you know, like oh my god, th- w- with the elders. Yeah, th- that that, that gore. Oh. See, gore is really hard. I think gore is the one area that sort of ev- has evolved the slowest yeah. in cinematography. Yeah. It's hard to make gore new because mm-hmm. it's just gore. So when you see a movie like Midsommar, I feel like they really found their own niche with it because of the way they filmed it. Yeah. The way like the director of photography shot it. Oh my and god. And how fucking visceral it, w- it it that's what it, it hurt my soul. It like, was almost like a horrific Alice in Wonderland. Like, it was so horrific. Because it was like all the shots were at during the daytime. Yep. There were some n- night shots when that guy snuck into the little cathedral for the you know to take pictures. Yep. Kind of but all the horror was in the but day. But the, the the there was a drug that drug aspect like the hallucinogenic. Right. You know because they took shrooms. Right. On the way in, didn't they take shrooms? Yeah, it's midsummer. We're just chilling. We have flowers and on our it, crown during the daytime. Yeah, they're but tripping then out. That drink, didn't they? Before their ceremonies, yes, they, they, they had they a ceremonial that, tea. What? What? It, that was like ayahuasca or some yep. shit like that. Yeah, right? I believe it was. That's yeah. what I thought. I don't know if they ever like named it something. No, but there, it did something to them. It was where definitely they were psychoactive. They were tripping out. Right, because they were doing the dance. Remember the dance? Oh, yeah, Th- the, That the, was the, the ceremonial dance the for circle, the girl. The yeah, circle, yeah. And that's yeah, how she's chosen as she the queen. She was the last one standing. She's the spring queen. Right. That's how they choose her, right? Got, so got the it. The May queen? I forget yeah. what they call her. But it was that was a ceremonial thing mm-hmm. they did, whatever, whenever that festival took place. Now, what do you think about, like, even the way the dude was groomed the way she would put her pubic hair in the food. It, it was like, it was like, you know what I mean? It was like witches. Yeah. It was like some witch, witchcraft stuff in that scene where he is penetrating the girl when they're fucking what, and, and all the, Oh my God, your shoe just fell oh. off. <clears throat> usually, usually, uh, is this, is this when the clothes start coming off? No. <laughs> is this a striptease portion you, of the show? Are you do, did you just do a spell in here? to make? <laughs> yeah, my, I did. Make, I did. My You're my midsummer <laughs> prince. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you, you just pr- wait to see what you, else you, i don't did you do a spell did, you got a you, haunted piano is over there, there. Pubic hair in this orange <laughs> drink? you drink it yourself you're the one trying to get me I to drink bill cosby uh, no, no. <laughs> will you time, time stamp, stamp that? that please thank you we try to make this pg okay let's go so it's number three on so we okay. both have same director Mid-Summer for number was two. a damn good movie damn good i mean one. That's and i love to you know why i like his movies because you can rewatch them <coughs> and then get something different out of them Absolutely. like there's stuff in hereditary like the there's writing in the bedroom or the scene where she's in the yes she's i just in got chills. like a spider yeah in the corner yeah. Uh, like the corner of the room, it's dark. In the movie theater, I didn't catch that. Yeah, because so the, the lighting was kind of off. Mm-hmm. But then I I knew so I missed something because the, the 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 theater's response was they're like oh, and I'm like huh like what are you? and then You're like what is it? Yeah, but then I ca- I caught it when she did the spider Ugh. walk. You know, like the spider yes, walk on the creepy. side of the room out of the his the yep. son's room. Yeah, but damn good director. He's really, really he's really unique. Atmospheric. Yeah. The way he shoots his scenes are so atmospheric. Really, he's and good. And the tone he uses, like think about Hereditary, the tone of the film, the color toning versus yeah. Midsummer, so different. Different, way different. So different. Let's talk. What about the sound design, the soundtrack? I mean, I mean, it's like good luck. It's magic. Good luck falling asleep to that. There's Hereditary. Yeah, Hereditary. That got into my bones. Ooh. No, oh, you know, no, it's like, no, because it's not anything you've ever heard. Yeah, your mind can't make sense of it. It's unsettling. It's it's jarring. It's my I favorite yeah. word. So, uh, definitely, if you haven't watched that, wa- really pay attention to this one. You don't want to miss the details of yeah. this because that there was a lot of setup with that. There was a lot. That of was setup. a whole setup. Mm-hmm. The whole thing was a setup. It was. All, it was all it was so planned. much suspense. It was planned. The right. whole thing was planned on their part. I didn't like the ending. The ending confused me. The ending felt like an <laughs> opening. You know, when she was propelled like, in the attic. You know, it's like, because Paimon, this demon entity 
they you needed that needed to take place because you needed like three beheadings, right? Because he to get this to, yeah, for, it to, for it to be completed. yeah for, for it to be completed right. the whole ceremony because he he wanted that he needed beheadings like three right yeah it I, was, I think so it was the it was uh, the gar- Tony's the gar- mom right it was the the dad Charlie the, oh the kid, right 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 and then the mom so that's right because Charlie did it himself yeah I forgot I no no Charlie did that remember when she ate the 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 chocolate cake with the nuts in it mm-hmm. and then. They're driving home, oh. and then th- there was a symbol on the the, the pole. pole. Yeah, so that was prophesized. That was yep. meant to happen. But then they took they beheaded Charlie's head, because at the end of the movie, Charlie's head's on the shrine. That's right. Do you remember? But the are head? the elders in that t- treehouse? Spoiler alert: Are they? Isn't that? Didn't it feel like it kind of led into Midsummer a little bit? Wait, wait, what do you? What are at you? At the implying? end of Hereditary, what are you implying that the the movies are connected? I think the movies. Uh, there's some thread. Uh, if you watch the end of of Hereditary again and rewatch Midsummer, yeah, it feels like it leads into it. And it, this is That's just speculation on my That's end. Interesting. But it, be, it, you think about the ceremonial aspect of it, and spe- didn't you think that end scene almost was? Wait, which one? A Midsummer of Hereditary. Okay. Didn't it feel almost out of place? Didn't it feel a little out of left field? It felt so stylized. Yeah, everything like, else took place in this modern world in their house, and then we're in this in the in the fun house in the in the clubhouse, right? Or, yeah, the treehouse, right? What was unsettling was uh, Tony Collette's uh, body floating up to the oh god, oof, that floating, was so cool, like floating that up was to a the cool clubhouse. Little, yeah, I, you know what, I didn't even think of it that way because beca- I, I try to uh, separate the two. But if you're saying there's a connection, that's genius. I think for there might be. That'd be genius for the director to it even make would. that connection and to do a trilogy, like to add it to do something so else. So I'm I'm cur- I'm just kind of confused. Like, where are the connections? Are you saying that is, is there similarities because of the well, ceremonial aspects? Well, of think it? about. I only think okay, the village in Midsummer. Yeah. Who started the village? How did the village get created? How did the um, ethos of their existence? How did that come to be? That I don't know, but they're two different religions. I mean. Those were two different religions, right? This one, they're paying homage to a demon entity named Paimon. Right. The other one was some Swedish re- old school religion. But how do we know Paimon isn't a part of... Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, like maybe there's deities and entities that they pray to that we don't even know about because we couldn't get it all in one hour, uh, half hour and a half long movie. But think about the end of, of Midsummer. There was some... Well, symbolism there, was sim- there, was symbols. there was symbolism in that bur- in the burning yeah, there were symbols in the bear yeah yeah i don't and know the way they set the like the the men had to offer themselves there was an offering at the end similar to, hereditary. to similar to the end of hereditary there were these like sacrificial <sighs> symbols if anything if it wasn't directly literally like correlated it's damn similar it's as far similar as, it's similar it's as far as this I wonder maybe about that's his childhood. the director's style. Yeah, he what happened to his shit. childhood? <laughs> I, w- I know. <laughs> I mean that imagination. Okay, wait, you got to do three. You can do okay, your third. Okay, my third is Omen, the original Omen. Wow. The original. That's a fucking... Damien. Oh, oh the, 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 the Damien. nanny. Damien. Yeah. <laughs> this is for you. What, what does she say? This is for you, Damien. It's all for you. It's all and for she, you. And she, and sac- she fucking tumbles. She sacrificed herself. Bye. Do you remember that movie? I wouldn't I wouldn't even sacrifice myself for my own niece and nephew. Have you seen Damien 2, Omen 2, when he's a teenager and he mm-hmm. discovers, he, his self-discovery, he realizes he's the Antichrist mm-hmm. or the son of uh, Satan? Do I've you seen, that? I've seen every, from terrible horror movies to, to great ones. But you remember that. The I second do. one. I do remember the second one. Do you remember the one with, um, the final, uh, uh, what's her name from, uh, fucking 10 things I hate about you. And yes, Julia Stiles was in a, is that a the remake? That was a remake. She was, it was a remake of the omen. It wasn't That's too right. terrible. Yeah. Wait, 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 this isn't my number three, but did you see the orphan? No. <gasps> you haven't seen the orphan. No. I'm so excited for you. Oh, I'm so jealous. Write down the orphan. Yo, is it, is it from where? What? What? It's an American. But what year? Two thousand six, seven. Have you seen it? No, but I hear it's so good. It's so well done. What's the, it about? I can't tell you. It's about an orphan. That's all you need to know. It's not called orphanage. No. It's called the orphan. The orphan. 
It's so cool. What it's such it? a what cool. Is the, what does the poster look like? Is it a, um, a young? It's it's, it's a, a little girl. It's with a photo of me because both of my parents are dead. No, it's a little girl. It's a little girl. I think you know what? I think I did. I have <sighs> seen that. She has brown hair on the cover with pigtails. Orphan. Yes. Just her, yeah. But it's been so long. I don't. I forget. I it. forgot what. I can't the remember the couple that was. Yes. Yeah. Who See, I was right. Is it? That's it. Vera. Who who's who are the two? Who's the wife and the husband in that? Is it Vera Famiglia? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's that's your Great. number three. No, my number three. Uh, you want my number three? Yeah. One of the movies that when I, I I don't know if I could ever watch it again. I had to stop it three times because I almost had a panic attack watching it. Um. And it has stuck with me on a visceral level. I think this director understands women's fears, and I don't know how he understands them so well because he's a man and he's also non-American. So I don't know, understand how he knows my fears so well. Mm -hmm. It's called The Antichrist, Lars Van Trier. When was that? It's the a deep cut. This is like art house horror. Is that in the 70s? 2000. I don't know. M m maybe 2005. It's with William Defoe. Oh, I love Willem Dafoe. And yeah. um, that French actress. I love her name. Uh, I, I love her. She's been in a couple of his films. She was in Nymphomaniac. Did you ever see Nymphomaniac? No. Do, do you, does anybody know? Do you know her name, Deb? It's called uh, The Antichrist by Lars Van Trier. Uh, what, so what is that? A, a possession? Demonic? Or like I don't even know what genre you'd put this in. A psychological thriller. What's her name? Charlotte? Charlotte, yeah. Yeah, Charlotte Gainsbourg. Oh. Gainsborn? Gainsborn? Gainsborg. So good. And William Defoe. So uh, it's you, it's psychological. You, can, you, can you summarize it just real quick? Like, what's it about? Is it about someone that gets possessed? No, or, or it's about. Or is it literal? It's about the Antichrist. It's, 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 it's kind of. It's literal in the sense of the Antichrist being a metaphor for something. Right. Oh, it's metaphorical. It's though? metaphorical of what the Antichrist is. Is it about wh who's who's it's, the main? It's character? about uh, some like a woman's fears becoming a, a almost a demonic possession. Like you know how you can become your fears can control you so much just as a human yeah. being, and uh, it, yeah, and it debilitates you. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like a woman's fear monster personified and coming to life in different ways. And the ending is just so brutal. Does she get possessed? No, there's no possession. There's no possession. It's it's such an interesting film. It's it's definitely it's it's not. It doesn't follow like the American tropes that we have in our films. It doesn't follow like the way films have a first, second, and third it's act. It's right. its own thing style. Yeah, and you get so engrossed because it's just these two actors. So why the, why the, the the title Antichrist? The Antichrist. I can't tell how you. How does that? What is? How does that play into the story? I can't tell you without that ruining. That will ruin it. Mm -hmm. You have to watch it all. So the way is it the one end. of those M Night Shyamalan things that you have to wait till the end? Then you're like, oh, I got it now. Not necessarily M Night Shyamalan because you know those don't always pay off. I do don't, love his movies. I watch them all. Him. Don't talk down I, on him. I res look. I respect him. Don't talk him. down on him. I respect him. Signs was a damn good. Signs movie. Signs was one of my favorite movies. Damn good movie. Signs was so amazing. Don't talk down on him. Old was. Old. Old was. Oof. Old was. Yeah. Old was confusing. Yeah. Old could have been done really well. Science. Six Sense was bomb. Six Sense, one of bomb. the greatest. Uh, even Unbreakable. Bomb. The Happening. Uh, what, is it just a fart cloud? So, so, so. What is it, just a giant fart I, cloud? I'll choose The Village over that. In The Village. Because the ending, you're like, oh. It's, it's, I wanted it to be, how bad did you want it to be a creature? How bad. fucking bad. Bad. But you get the, you get the payoff but at the it end. But it was a cool concept. Yeah, I did. Lady I like it. Lady in the Water. Y Ooh, that's another. Uh. But he made that film for his daughter. It was okay, like about I'll give him that then. I'll and him. You got my, I, my number one song. I love Signs, Signs and Unbreakable. Is so good. Signs and Unbreakable. But I Those fucking are. love Paul Giamatti. Yeah, damn I'd good actor. I'd see him in anything. Yeah, he's I good. really would. Is he an East Coast? I feel like he's an East Coast. He's no? got he's, he's got, got East, East Coast, Coast vibes. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I dude, didn't know look, we look at the time. Look at the time. We didn't even. Can we get back to your comedy and like promoting your comedy? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so. Because look at the time. We on our last 10 minutes. Where Okay, so Five, ten where minutes. am I going to be? The last com <laughs> the last question I asked you was, I think, New York, you're, when you started comedy. I started In the it. bringer rooms. Yeah. Let's fast forward to now. Okay. You did all that. Yeah. 
paid your dues, yeah. got your own fan base, got representation. Now you're in L.A. Where can people see you? Outside of Brad Pitt's house waiting for him to fall in love. I mean. Uh, no, I'm going to be uh, at four, uh, 420. I'm going to be at the West Palm Beach Improv. Do you, do you smoke? Hell yeah. Okay. We're going to hotbox okay, that uh, bitch. Okay. All right. Listen, out West of my Palm own Beach curiosity, are, could you function and do your comedy high? If it's some, if it's a part of the show, yes. For like 420, I could do that. But I don't like to be high or doing drunk doing stand up. I want to be connected. Yeah. So I, I afterwards, like to be sober. You, afterwards you do it. Yeah, I have a little scoochie. A little you, can, you can do that. You'll yeah, smoke yeah, a little yeah. joint. A little like, wine, a little okay, scoochie. That's scoochie. It. Yeah. But not before or during. No, because uh, it doesn't work for me. I don't. I don't like it. it. Doesn't keep me clear. I'm clearer and more present and funnier when I'm when just you're sober. Yeah, I might have like a little tequila, but it's no good. Not you go, you, there's a fine line between it being something that helps or inhibits you. Right. For me, f- per, from a performative standpoint. That's interesting. Can um, you write? How about this? Can you write? Can you write? Hell yeah. It? That's when it's fun. When you're stoned and getting a little loopy. Then you can I write. I think of ideas. You think of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you write. Yes. Oh, yes. interesting. I, I was just curious about that. Yeah. Because I know that's more of a common thing nowadays. Comedians who smoke. You know, it's more accepted. It is. It's legal everywhere. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, um, and then may the fourth be with you. Uh, may fourth, I'm gonna be at the Netflix is a joke festival at the Bourbon Room here in Los yeah, Angeles. That's a big deal. Okay, I'm excited. Who, else, who else is on that lineup? Um, Matt Reif, Katie Kazorla, my girl Kalia McNeil, and my homie Justin Martindale. So there's only a select few. Yeah, there's like five of us. How much are tickets? A thousand dollars a ticket. Thank you. Where could they purchase the tickets? Um, uh, JesseMay.com. Uh, now, do you have a, w- a website as well where you JesseMay.com jessiemay.com can you spell it out for uh, some of my listeners and viewers j-e-s-s-i-m-a-e dot c-o-m and do you offer merch as far as t-shirts we're having a merch store be rebuilt just now yeah so okay. merch will be available probably when? the beginning of the summer are you happy with all this stuff Deb? like yeah. what we're doing Deb has every piece. Do, you, do you like what we're doing she right steals now? all my merch you like like how we're plugging it and everything yeah yeah she's okay. happy i actually got dates so, right so um what if what was that Oh yeah! Oh my God! I have dates this weekend. I don't know when this goes. This up. is coming out next week. Okay, perfect. We don't have to worry about those. Okay. Is there anything else? Oh, what about your? Are you working on a special or anything like I that? I am currently. Go ahead. When's I'm working on a special right now. It should be coming out. I don't know when because it depends on when everything's edited and done. But we are currently working on a comedy special. My first how special. Close, how closer? That's it. We dude, just started. Everything just started. Deb was actually taking a little bit. Deb, is she? We're gonna she, be sending she, you a, a some work done pr- production release. You're gonna have to okay, sign. Okay, so at some point. so Netflix definitely look out for the home. Yes. right here and, and put it out. Would yes. you want it on Netflix? Like, where would you want it put out? I don't know. You know, I wouldn't mind YouTube. I wouldn't what? mind Netflix. I just want it out. You do? Yeah, it's not for a money Hulu? thing for me. Hulu. Fuck that. No, I'm kidding. Can you imagine? I'm like, anywhere. Fuck anywhere, Hulu. anywhere. No, yeah, yeah. An hour? Half hour? Hour? No. What, what are we looking at? A little deconstructed. Not like your traditional stand-up special. It's not going to it's be. It's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. Like vlogging and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, like what it takes to build a special. What it, what a special, preparing for a special looks like. And you're capturing like. all that? Yeah. Behind the scenes? Yeah, we just captured the r- raccoons and the poop. <laughs> so that'll be in. So you're like... 85, 90% <laughs> done with that. You're close. You really enjoy that sparkling water. I'll, I'll, I'll grab you one for the road. Um, <sighs> so is there <laughs> is there anything else? Did, did we, Deb, did we miss something? I think you got your shows. I think I got the shows what right. What about if someone wants to... Um, Finger me, they'd have to ask and take me to a nice steak and lobster dinner. Okay. Okay. Time stamp um, that. What about someone if someone wants to book you? What, who do they go through? Uh, there's a contact on my Instagram page. On your link they tree? They can email me directly. Tree, on, on your link tree? On my link tree. So Look at you knowing the, sta- the, the I ha- I have to. I have to know That's really stuff. smart. So link tree's link great. Tree, link tree. Uh, click on her Instagram, and your Instagram is, go ahead. It's Jesse May Peluso. J-E-S-S-I-E-M-A-E. Yeah. P-E-L. No, no, that was bad. That was, uh, he didn't spell J-E-S-S. it right. J-E-S-S. J E S S I E M A E P S T L U S O. Just Google Jesse Make Comedian. I'm the only one. All right. I'm Just like the share of comedy. So many timestamps in this. So many. You are so stamps. cute. I can't handle it. So many. What did you say, Deb? She said she knows. I said I'm, I'm cute, and she I'm affirmed it. No, I'm dating. I'm dating someone on this. Deb, stop coming on so hot. Yeah. Jeez, sorry. Yeah, I love you. I'll grab you a Red Bull, whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> figure his way out, okay? Was that easy? Was that easy? What? Was that Hanging an easy interview? You? Was that an easy it was interview? It awesome. It was just it went, a walk in the park. I can't believe it was an hour. It a felt walk like in the park. I love talking about movies. I could do that I could. Al- I you don't could smoke do. weed, do you? No. Fuck. But I used to. I used to every day. Blunts wow. were my thing. Really? Yeah. Wow. I would get the Ultimos. I would wow. Ooh. Maybe you could be the sober version. I'll smoke. I'm not against Can it. Can you be around people smoking? Or do you prefer not to? I mean, if it's like uh, like a hot box, no. Like if I'm in a car and there's blunt smoke, and I'm like, uh, but I could be around like people who are smoking. Maybe we should do, once the my platform's studio is open, we should do a BAM. I do Bong and Movie. Okay. Where I get stoned and watch a movie. We could do that together. Maybe we could do a horror film together. Yeah, or like a review. Yeah, like a review. Yeah, I'm we down talk for it. Over I'm it. a fan of all that. I buy that movies. so fun. So let me put this out there. If you go to iTunes, uh, they have a four ninety nine deal for $5 movies. I yeah. go there every week. Uh, dude, I, I have a whole... I have a whole collection now of stuff that I've just bought for four ninety. Do they have a good catalog? I bought Hereditary for oh, that shit. amount. It was, That's sale, good. it was on sale one of the weeks. Yeah. I bought uh, Six Sense, Inglorious Bastards, Those are Jerry classics. Maguire. Yeah. You name it. Misery. That was a good one. Fuck. Misery. Stephen yeah. King. We didn't Stephen even get into King that Misery. shit. Yeah. Um, so thanks for tuning thanks in. Thanks for having me. Uh, I don't have anything to read off. I, I have to go by memory. You got it. Uh, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby if you want to help support the pl- um the podcast go oh scissor bros we uh drop those episodes every friday we have live events coming up up too as well um uh, uh instagram slash q u a n g o u stevie weeby bandcamp dot com um am i missing something oh p.o box thank you send him money he needs another uh what do you call this thing he needs another sleeping bag for when a lady or fella comes over i don't know what you're into i don't want to assume Assuming gets people canceled. Right, right there. We got time stamp that. Cancel that. <laughs> oh, cancel that one out there. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I thought you and I were the most fun. <gasps> okay, P.O. Box. If you want to send any packages or whatever mail, 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. Did we miss something? Oh, it's right there on the fucking yeah, wall. Yeah. I was wondering if you, what you were I, looking at. I forget about stuff. And that's, we made an hour. We did it. Dude. What do they send to your P.O. Box? Money? No money, mail, stickers, That's t-shirts, adorable. stuff like that, posters, Become books. a Patreon. Yeah, be, become a patron Support today. Support the Patreon. Thank you. And, Support and, the and arts. And subscribe to Scissor Bros as well today. I Thank fucking you. love Jeremiah. Isn't he the best? He is. We all got. And Sharp Tongue. Yeah. Sharp Tongue Podcast. Yes. Subscribe today. Go ahead. Sharp subscribe Tongue. today. Where? At the at the podcast store. On our link tree. <laughs> on our link tree. On our Instagram. Yeah, and the Click. Deuce Podcast. And girl podcast and tell your dad if he's rich and th- single that I'm here for him. Go to her uh, uh, link tree and then click on that. Yeah, and then I'll climb up your dad's tree. Okay. <laughs> well, not your dad. He's dead. I'm sorry. Is it too soon? My buddy Skip is a trip feeling blue like a crib. Straight for robbing a bank, letting loose from the hip. He really couldn't predict this grip was so full of angst. Him and Henry were with Peckers, did a song and dance at bit. Oh, rodeo man in the West, you can. You're the best on the land. Too blessed to sense. Do the bull with your hand. No skip, you can. Get that fucking bull, pull on that rope. Feeling stir crazy, maintaining against the grain. Making me want to get in a plane. The pain inside my brain never ends sustain. I'm down for the count on the ground. Today, don't give it away, the peace and the praise, the rays Shining it down to mighty as crowns, the finest of frowns delayed Skippy's afraid, he feels betrayed, lift this way, can deal with shade It's made in spade, he made the gray, displayed in a charade of pain I am not a man, I am an animal, a male I live by maritime, the law of water, about to sail When my mother had me, I slipped out of her